All right, guys, uh, what we have here is a new build coming. So I um, just wanted to kind of, uh, you know, kind of review what I've done here, what I'm going to do. Um, I've got a need for a rifle for my daughter, okay? A good rifle, something that she can go out to 300 plus yards with and be confident. We're out, uh, you know, woodchuck hunting. Uh, probably next year, right? Uh, this is something that she can use uh, to kind of, you know, hang with me and, and uh, you know, we can continue to have fun and, and make memories. So platform, how, as I have it configured, right? For what we're trying to do on some, some mid-range, you know, wood chucks. So, all right, let me cut the crap here. Uh, this is a 204 Ruger, okay? So 20 cal, something small, Criterion barrel, right? It's 26 inches long right now. So 26 inch uh, stainless barrel. It's got the 11 degree uh, target crown on it, which I'm going to run this. Uh, this is going to be a double duty gun. I'm going to run this thing this winter uh, because in the northern states you cannot use AR-15s. Um, so I need a bolt gun that's not going to blow up pelts. All right. So I'm going to carry this thing with a 26 inch uh Basically, it's, it's the Remington Varmint Taper. So this is not going to be a pleasant carry, but uh, I don't care. Um, I'm just going to run it one season. That should be fine. The Action. It's a Remington 700 Action. Uh, this thing is straight out of box. Okay, this is this is not a takeoff. I ordered this thing uh, from Remington and had everything blueprinted. Okay, now you see two bolts here. I wanted a stainless steel um, receiver, and I could not get a stainless steel receiver with a 223 bolt face. Uh, they only make those in blued. I did not. I didn't want that, so I ordered the 308 bolt face uh, stainless receiver, or stainless action. Um, had that blueprinted because I'm, you know, the bolt, you know, will be maybe this will be used for on this gun for something else in the future. I don't know. Um, but I had to order a stripped bolt. I got a little video on how to put the uh, uh, extractor in here. I'll do a little clip on the, the ejector. But I um, had all these guys machined uh, and blueprinted. Uh, it's, it's pretty nice stuff. So uh, what I'm going to do from here is uh, get this guy head spaced. And... All right, guys. I got to put the uh, I got to put the extractor in this uh, stripped bolt here. Uh, so I'll just do a real quick clip on this. Basically, what you want is you want the tabs, right? If you can see that, you want the tabs down, right? The tabs towards uh, the bolt face, right? And what you do is you start, you start at the extractor, or I'm sorry, ejector, right? And there's a little. Uh, place for the tab to fit in there and you just work that guy around these things are like one-time use so get it right the first time they're really a pain in the butt uh, to get out and uh, I've replaced a couple of them uh, but uh, I've never I've never had any luck you know, fishing them out once you get them in there and being able to reuse them so it's like a one-time uh, use thing Put the screwdriver on. I like to use a punch for these guys instead of like a pick or something because you kind of need to horse them a little bit just to break it over the edge. And then once you get it started, right, it should just snap right in the groove. And kind of what we're looking for is we want this this guy to move a little bit. So you can't even see that. We want this to move a little bit and spring back. And then of course we'll check it with a case here. There we go. So it holds it pretty good. So there you go, Remington 700 bolt, uh, you know, uh, extractor. I got this thing head spaced here. So let's try it out. Here's a Forrester uh, go gauge. Let's chamber this guy. Should go. And it does. Locks. And the no-go gauge. A 
it won't go. All right, this is head spaced. We'll get the uh, ejector in there. And this guy's uh, getting closer. All right, guys, gonna put the ejector in this thing. Um, I bought a kit uh, from Midway. Uh, it comes with the ejector, the spring, and the uh, roll pin, which I've already got pounded into uh, place. So from here, all you need is, this is a 223 bolt face. You need a 223 uh, head case, head size case, 223 sized head case, something like that. Words that mean things. Push this guy in. We use the case to help us out. I've got the, I highly recommend you put the, or the uh, extractor in first, right? So that you don't have to manage the weight of this pin all by yourself the whole time, right? Use the ejector. Uh, extractor, doggone it. All right, you're not gonna be able to see any of this. All right, so we've got a barrel to action, ready to go. Um, bottom metal and action screws are the only thing I got left on this guy. Um, but I need to have something to set this thing in. This is gonna be the funny part of the video, okay? I got my old Remington SPS stock. This was the stock that came on my 243 before I put that mag pull on it. And I'm gonna try this thing because first of all, G's not gonna get to hunt with this thing. Uh, the season's over uh, as far as uh, you know, groundhogs or woodchucks, whatever you wanna call them. Um, uh, but I'm gonna get to use this guy for uh, foxes and coyotes here. Um, and you know, 100 200 even 250 yards this is probably going to be just fine you know it's light and i don't want to spend a bunch of money on a stock because i don't know what i want yet all right so next uh, stage of the process here is i'm going to put this uh, weaver this is a 20 moa rail on this guy so and how i do this is oh let's see right here i use First thing I'll do is I'll clean up the top of this receiver, right? With alcohol. Take the bolt out, right? What I do is I'll stuff some, uh, uh, you know, paper towels and things in here because I'm going to use blue uh, Loctite. Uh, and I just put a couple drops on this guy uh, and then cinch this thing down. And the reason why I use the blue Loctite is because... Uh, even after it dries, right, I'm not really doing this for any type of structural, you know, kind of integrity, really. I mean, it kind of fills in the gaps. Uh, it keeps water and stuff out of this thing. So, you know, in 10 years or whatever, if I take this thing off, it's not going to be rusty or, or crappy. But it just gives a really, uh, I guess it kind of, kind of does, uh, it gives you a nice mating surface. It fills in all the little gaps. Uh, the other thing that's nice about using the blue Loctite is uh, you can take it off, right? A little bit of acetone will wipe this thing off like it was never even there. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do right here. All right, so I just got a rag with some uh, alcohol on it. We'll just give this guy a wipe. Just trying to get all, you know, any oils or anything like that off this receiver. So, doesn't take much. All right, take this guy and like stir it up real well. Stuff kind of settles a little bit, separates. Looks like there's a little film on there. And, uh, for this whole operation, it's just a, you know, just a dab will do, you know. Something about like that. We'll see if that's enough. These Weaver uh, Picatinny rails are kind of awesome. I have one of these on my 243. Uh, my, my Remington, my other 243, I've got a zero... Uh, MOA on that guy. Uh, I love these things. So we'll get these uh, 
screws kind of pre-gamed here. I believe the long ones go in the back. Could be wrong, might have to pull this off. That's all right, because guess what? We can just clean it up. I've definitely got enough on the on the back. <laughs> and actually I got enough on the front too. I think we're all right. Just snug these things down. All right. Now, once I start snugging this thing down, I go from the back to the front. I always go in one direction, try to iron out right, these guys a little bit. I don't want this guy, to, I want to tighten it from the ends, right, and, and take a risk of making this rail, you know, kind of uh, heave or anything. So, let's put a little snugness on this. I guess I could get out my little torque wrench thing, but I don't really care for this thing. I just got enough on the front where it's squeezing out. Okay, that's pretty much that. I'll give this guy a wipe so this looks like a professional job. Doesn't look like a Boy Scout did this. No offense to, uh, you know, she just Eagle Scouts out there that are offended by that, but whatever. Sorry. All right, very nice. That's all there is to it. And uh, I'm gonna keep wiping this guy down. I don't like, I don't really like to see, you know, the Loctite, but it's all right, very minor. Check the fit of the bolt, make sure I don't have any screw heads that are in my way. These are very smooth. All right, there it is, Picatinny rail. This gun is ready for a scope. I'm probably going to put my uh, 20 power beater on this thing. Uh, I don't have any dies for this yet, so I'm, but I'm going to do a whole series on reloading for this thing and, and let you guys kind of follow along with that. Uh, so I think uh, I'll probably get some factory ammo and run the first rounds down through this thing maybe today. Nice. All right, guys, here we are at the range. Uh, just to give a little range report here. So I started over here at about 25 yards, did some sight in type stuff. Actually, the first three shots out of the gun are right there. Uh, and then moved it to 100 and shot, you know, kind of getting this thing close. Moved over here, had a little competition with my uh, oldest here. Looks who, who do you think won? Uh, yeah. Uh huh. Why did I win? Because uh, you're the closer together and more like, I don't know, like probably. Yeah, but what about me? What about you? Because I'm, I'm better. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So the top two cards are uh, Factory Hornady. Now I don't have any, I don't have any dies yet. All right. Uh, this, so I bought two boxes, Factory Hornady 40s and Factory Hornady 32s. All right. G shot the left two cards, which this was looking pretty good. Then something happened over here. It jerked. It jerked. Oh, okay. Then I shot this. We got two close, and then I got a flyer, too. 
Um, oh, I'm sorry, no. I got too close and I got a flyer right in the middle, right? Then the 32 grain, right? She's got too close and a little flyer. And I got three and basically they're all touching here at 100 yards. Factory ammo, brand new custom rifle. Oh, yeah. You like this thing? Yes. We're going to punch some time cards with this thing? I hope so. Oh, you hope so. All right. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, there'll be a lot more uh, with this gun. This will be a nice little workhorse edition. Uh, we'll get out there and uh, we'll do some videos next on some reloads. Thanks. You should